Are you okay? Welcome to Risky Bitness, where we talk tech, trivia, and history about all our favorite retro games. If you love retro games, please like, subscribe, and enable notifications. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Your subscription and interaction help the channel grow, meaning I can do better videos in the future. I'll be able to have more info, do more research, and it'll make a big difference in the quality of these videos. Last week, we did a deep dive into the Nintendo Entertainment System. Check it out if you're a Nintendo fan. By 1998, arcades were all but dead, and 3D had become king. We had PlayStation, N64, and Sega Saturn in our homes. Fighting game fans were playing Tekken 3 and Virtua Fighter 3, and story-driven adventure games and RPGs were dominating the sales charts. I think even Mortal Kombat was trying to go 3D at that point with Mortal Kombat 4. Womp womp. <laughs> but SNK continued to do what they did best, releasing high quality 2D arcade fighting games. Let's talk about Real Bout Fatal Fury 2. As I've been covering the Fatal Fury series, I've heavily focused on gameplay. This is due to the lack of robust resources that are available regarding these titles. I think this has a lot to do with the fact that they're not particularly popular in the US. So because they're not that popular here, it's really difficult to find a lot of information in English about these games. I'm sure if I really searched the internet very thoroughly and looked for some Spanish and Japanese language interviews and other sources, I might probably get a little bit better information. But with the limited time that I have to produce these videos, I really wasn't able to find very much. So instead, I'm going to be focused way more on gameplay, the game system itself, the way that the new characters fit into the roster, and a little bit of the lore and trivia that I was able to dig up on this title. Real Bout Fatal Fury 2 was released March 20th, 1998. It's up against Street Fighter 3 Second Impact in the arcades. Street Fighter 3, while much beloved by hardcore fighting game enthusiasts, was something of a commercial failure at the time. This is also prior to Third Strike, which really brought that game home. Real Bout 2 also paled in comparison to the King of Fighters 2008, which remains one of the most popular iterations of the King of Fighters franchise. Real Bout 2 is the only game in the Fatal Fury series to feature both Krauser and Yeast as playable characters. And uh, there are also end bosses depending upon who we finish the game with. If you finish as Terry, you get Geese. If you finish with a character that debuted in Real Bout, uh, I'm sorry, rather, Real Fury Special or 2, then you'll fight Cross. There is no story to Real Bout Fatal Fury 2. It's completely non canon. The story of Fatal Fury ended with Real Bout Fatal Fury. When Terry killed Geese, that was the end. Then his empire crumbled and then Second South Town began. And Second South Town was no longer run by a criminal organization. That's when the story changes to be about Rock Howard, Geese's son, who Terry raised after Geese's death. Now, it's very important to note that the real ballot Fatal Fury special Dominated Mind, which is a Japan-only PlayStation release, actually does take the story into a separate timeline. Whether that's official canon or not, I really can't say for sure. So it is entirely possible that Garo Densets Dominated Mind, or rather Rurobato Garo Densets Dominated Mind on the PlayStation, may have actually been the last canon title in the series. But as far as I can tell, the first real bout is officially the last canonical entry in the series before Garo Mark of the Wolves. In the Japanese release, player portraits appear damaged on the Kiki screen, but this was removed in the international release. There is a special hidden boss character in Real Bout 2, which is Alfred. Alfred was the protagonist of the Dominated Mind game that I talked about a few moments ago. Apparently he can be played as in hacked versions of the game and is wildly unbalanced, but he only appears as a special hidden boss character. 
I'm not going to talk about him too much because he's not really in the game, quote unquote. The closest thing to a story is that the occupants of South Town decide to hold a tournament, and two new fighters, Rick Stroud and Li Shang Fei, appear to prove themselves. However, this entire story, once again, it is non canon, so those characters do not exist in the Fatal Fury timeline. As a matter of fact, even all the characters that appeared in Fatal Fury 2, Fatal Fury Special, and Real Bout Fatal Fury Special were removed from canon after Fatal Fury Special, which, as a reminder, decanonized Fatal Fury 2. So if you're not super confused yet, then you can go back and watch the animes based on Fatal Fury, which really turn the story upside down and are also kind of halfway canon and sort of halfway. It's weird. The gameplay system is similar to Real Bout Fatal Fury Special, with one key exception. There are only two swathed planes now. So there's one regular plane that both fighters can fight on, and one singular rear sway plane. And only one character can be on the rear plane at a time. So unlike Real Bout Special, where you could actually go back and forth and fight on both planes, you can now only fight on the middle plane. This really simplifies things quite a bit, and of course, you can do high, low, and mid attacks from the back plane. You can move back and forth. You can roll forward to the front plane. You can also recover to the back plane after a knockdown. Uh, instead of using the E button to pull your opponent out of the back plane, you can now do so by pressing the C button and that pulls out of the back plane. As usual, Terry's round wave and some other special moves can hit an opponent if he's on the There are also some special moves that cannot hit an opponent. Now, if you're playing in a stage that only has one plane, there are a few stretches that only have one plane, then those moves will knock the enemy into a background obstacle, allowing you to juggle for more complaints. You can still dash, large and small jump, crawl, turn in midair in order to turn your attack into a cross up, use feints and fakes to avoid attacks or trick your opponent, press A and B together for an evasion attack, which causes an enemy hit to miss and counters in the same motion. You can press D when knocked down to safe ball, or press up and D to recover into the rear plane. You can attack an opponent who is on the ground. You can taunt by pressing C and B. And you can still use the break shot attack. Many more moves now can be used for break shots. As long as you have H power or above, those special moves will interrupt a chain while you are blocking and allow you to take back a, an aggressive position rather than turn away and run. There is no guard break as of yet. Similar King of Fighters, Real Bat 2 features continue service, which gives the players a bonus on continue. You can choose to have uh, your, your super meter full, you can have the enemy life down to one quarter, or you can have uh, one round already won. Or you can choose no service and continue that's all. Some movesets have been modified and some inputs have been simplified. One of the most notable changes is that Terry's power dunk is now a combo with his standing foot clap. The input is changed there to a command move. Power dunk motion now there's a fighter kick which sets up a juggle. You can juggle with the rising tackle or with the burning tackle. Blue Mary now has an air dive that can combo into a cross up or an arm bar. And Anthony has gained back all the moves. EX counterpart had last time, with the exception of that flaming back handspring kick. That is gone forever, which really stinks because I really like that move. I thought it was a really great way to stop an advancing opponent or to counter. So, this is the game. The new characters are placed right on top of the character's left screen, which is really handy for players who want to test them out. And Real Bout 2 is also unique in that the new characters seem to have moved that with the mold of the game. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, I'm going to insert some cards here so you can look at some videos from a YouTuber who has a very in-depth video about these two characters, but I'm going to give you a quick breakdown here. Rick's command attacks are a chopping right and a, smash and a smashing sword, which are powerful combination punches. His special moves include shooting star, a dash followed up with a punch combination that ends in a knockdown. This is the only move in the game with an EX version which can be formed when Rick has S power or P power. Shooting Star is his break shot, it also has Fake. 
Blazing Sunburst is a spinning punch that evades an attack and bounces the enemy off the ground. Divine Blast is a dashing straight punch that can be countered into a bait. Full, Full Moon Fever changes to a bobbing and weaving position and dodges one incoming high attack. Hellion is a standing hook uppercut combo. You can juggle that. Not ready to use that juggle. His super move, Gaia's Breath, blows a gust of wind from his fist. And his power super, Howling Bull, is a lightning fast flurry of punches that can strike the enemy even at range. It's probably one of the best power supers in the game. Rick has no projectiles except for his supers, but he can close distance very quickly and effectively. You can do a lot of mix up with him by dashing and dash canceling. Uh, since a lot of his moves involve moving forward, you can play with that a lot. He's very fast, he has a lot of effective rush combos. Uh, he, he really does have, have no effective anti air move. He does have that command uppercut, and uh, how he can be used as an anti air with the time in the retreat. Li Shangfei has a number of close quarter striking techniques. Her command moves are Clean Up Femur, which is a crouching low kick and a backslide elbow jab, uh, which is a short rising elbow strike. Pressing A continuously after this move will set up a short rush combo. And after the cleanup game removed, she can cancel into a short jump using the D button, where she is invulnerable for a short period of time. Her special move includes Namba Blast, a strike that generates an energy field, somewhat with a longer range strike, uh, also a great shot. She has flashing elbow thrust, a penetrating car wheel, followed by an elbow strike, and that can be comboed into a piercing flash elbow or a heart crushing elbow. She has an anti air, mountain breaker, a rising shoulder strike that can also be used for a break shot. She has a unique mechanic called Esaka, where she can counter air standing or crouching attacks by pressing A with the appropriate direction. And her feints can be used to dodge incoming attacks. Her Aesok is kind of cool if you are blocking, it's kind of like the defensive attacks that were in the other Fatal Fury titles. Uh, but if you press up or down, depending on what the opponent is doing, you can now do a a defensive attack in that direction, which is really, really useful. She has two supers, Major Steel God, which is a powered up running shoulder strike, and Ultra Albino Dragon, which is actually a three-part super move, kind of difficult to do. I'll try to do it here. If I mess it up, I'm sorry. In terms of graphics, Real Bat 2 has the best graphics of any Halo Fury game, apart from Garo, I think that's a bit better, and it's one of the best looking games on the Neo Geo. So let's go ahead and compare them, take a look at them side by side. Let me know what you think. about series continues to deliver an excellent sound experience. So go ahead and have a listen to some of the soundtrack here. I'm going to give a brief pause to the narration so you can enjoy it. I've never really played this one all that much until recently, and while I really like it, I think that Real Bout Special is a better game altogether. The game system hasn't really changed except for the change to the sway planes, and I don't think that the single sway plane system is quite as fun. 
Robots Who Haver has maintained the depth and fun of Robot Special, and I was really surprised just how deep this game actually is. There are a tremendous number of possibilities, and every fighter has a unique and better skill set. Apart from a few move changes and balance fixes and two characters, Robot doesn't really bring anything all that exciting to the table. It feels like SNK just needed another table theory game, and uh, just in order to meet some kind of expectation or competition. One big change that happened as I was making these videos is I found that I prefer playing as Harry Man. It used to feel a little good to me, but now that I've spent a lot of hours playing these games, I really like it the best. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and enable notifications. If you have any corrections, any comments, anything to add, please sound off in the comments down below. Next week, I'll conclude my coverage of the Table of Theory series with Garo, Mark of the Wolves. Until then, game on.